What is up, YouTube? It's Nine Project bringing you a brand new video, and today, guys, this is gonna be episode two of the rarest items in ESO. Now, this is gonna be a series where I cover discontinued rare items um, and just go over the descriptions of them. You know what they used to be used for, etc. Um, if there's any lore aspect behind it, possibly lore aspect. 99% of the time, it's gonna be developers messing up. But uh, yeah, with that being said, guys, today we're gonna be covering the and JD Runestones. Alrighty guys, so if you look on the screen here, you're going to be able to see the Lear and JD runestones. I'm going to throw up some actual pictures for you guys, so you guys can see these are actually real items. Uh, now, there's only a few pictures in existence. Um, there's only about two two to three pictures of the JD runestones in the entire world, guys. Two to three pictures of the JD. And there's only one Lear picture. One Lear picture off a German server um, in the entire world for this runestone. So these things are absolutely dumb fucking rare, okay? And now, these things were actually discontinued. Um... Back after the first first patch of ESO, when the game first came out. So we're talking on PC back in 2014 when this game first originally released. These things were actually discontinued. Um, so after the first patch, you would have not been able to achieve these runestones at all. So if you did manage to have some, I mean, like, this is from years and years and years ago, guys. Um, it would actually be, there's only one way to actually get these on console. Um, so the only way you could have actually got one of these on consoles if you were a PC transfer and you managed to have one of these in your bank or account, um, this would have actually transferred over with you and you could have actually had one on console. Um, and with that being said, these things would have been, like, the cost of these is absolutely dumb expensive, guys. Now, they have actually been selling. I got some pictures up that I can show you guys, um, for prices. Now, I don't know how long ago this was, but this would have been on a German server, um, so European server. Um, but these things would have... They're literally hundreds of thousands of gold. Um, if you can get one, I would ask more. I would ask for at least a million. If you were on console, I would ask like 10 million for these, honestly. Now, I don't know who the hell was going to buy that, but you know, if you got some gold lord or something, some dude who's got like 100 million in his bank account, yo, make him pay for this because these are absolutely dumb rare. On console, you, it, it's honestly impossible. You can never even have got one, unless, one of these unless you were a PC transfer. Um, so, with that being said, guys, I'm going to go over what these, you know, glyphs were used for. Um, so what these glyphs were used for was the Lear was actually used for a weapon damage um, If you actually you know wanted to translate it it wouldn't actually translate the rune You know after you, you know guys when you craft like a glyph it translates the rune for you um, It tells you what the trait is um, it would have still said unknown after you translated this rune stone um, And it wouldn't have counted towards the achievement in game for knowing all the essence rune stones But it would have given you weapon damage rune stone uh, regardless or glyph um, once you you know crafted with crafted it um, and yeah, it would have done that, but when you deconstructed the glyph that you, you know, you used the runestone with, it would have came out to just be the Kadir, no, the Tadiri runestone for the Lier, and it would have came out to be the Jidi, no, uh, the Tadi Kadiri runestone for the Jidi. The Jidi would have translated into a glyph of shielding, um, so that would have been a reduced block cost and then reduced bash cost, um, and it would have gave you back a Kadiri runestone, uh, when you deconstructed it. Again, not giving you any inspiration towards your enchanting skill line, and not giving you any translation at all, um, in the, uh, you know, for the runestone. So I don't know about you guys, but to me it's pretty apparent that these were actually just, you know, bugged runes that they didn't want inside of the game. So what they did was they sort of just made them translate into other runestones when you deconstructed them. Um, if you did manage to get an essence rune back out of them. So, yeah, it's a pretty stupid thing that they did. They should have just taken them out of the game um, from the start. But regardless, they are in the game and they will fetch a hefty price. As you guys can see, the JD can get you about 92,000 um, gold. I don't know when this picture was taken. This could have been like from two years ago. I really don't know. Um, cause I don't, I don't speak German, I can't read German, so, you know, I just know that's the language. But, um, so to get you about 92,000 for JD, and the Lear is actually way rare. The Lear is like, it's so much rarer than the JD, it's not even funny. Um, that's why there's only one pick in existence of it. That one would've got you 148,000. Now that person just literally threw that price up out of nowhere. That's the only one that ever sold, as you guys can see. Um, so I don't know, you know, how long that was. I can't read that. So whatever Vor34 Tajin means, I don't really know. But, um, yeah, so these things are actually dumb. You literally name the price, somebody's gonna pay for it. So there's one more thing I want to cover before we get into the lore aspect of it and what this could possibly be meaning lore-wise, even though we know it was just the developer messing up. But with that being said, I'm just gonna tell you guys that Gina Bruno actually admitted that this was actually a bug in the game and it should not be in the game. 
um, to begin with. But regardless, you can still have one. Um, but Gina Bruno did manage to say that this was actually um, bugged. And that's what that, she would have said this a couple years ago. But this is actually something that she said. So guys, now on to the lore aspect of the video. Um, now obviously, guys, this does not relate to lore at all. This is just a bug from the developers back when the game originally came out. Um, they took it out before the first patch. But we can go into some theories. You know, obviously, there's always going to be theories out there as to why something happened lore-wise. Um, so I'm going to get into that. Okay, so the origin of the mystic runestones found scattered across Tamriel is obscure and uncertain. Even their nature of material composition is a matter of hot debate among the sages of the Crystal Tower. The vulnerable and Serenique patriarch of mytho history holds that certain difficult passages in Toranan's journal indicate that runestones were already here when the Forsailer arrived from the old Aldemaris. However, no one the many huge patriarch of enchantment contends that they date from the early Mervithic era, and that they are an unintended consequence of an alien wizard's experiment gone array, of which alien wizard's experiment we do not know. But whatever the truth of their origin, after generations of study by the finest magical minds in the Somerset Isles, their various properties have nearly all been identified, and their uses in the enchantment of arms, armor, and ornaments are well understood. For general classification, they fall into three categories, which we later day mages have dubbed potency, aspect, and essence. For enchantment purposes, these three types of runestones can be understood as mystically complementary, for only by combining one of each category can the enchanter create a glyph, our term for the magical substance we use to endow an item with sorcerer's power. However, though we know how to use runestones to create magical items, the nigger remains. What are they? We have named their three standard categories, potency, aspect, and essence, but what does that mean? Even the great Fariz the Antic, who gave them these names, even he, when asked what they meant, merely shrugged and replied, those are the names that felt right to me. Even the fact that there are three kinds of runestones generates debate, as it seems to contradict the Anu Pandu theorem, which persists that duality is the foundation of Arubis. Camola and we, of Lidrilandril, asserted that it was impossible that there were only three types of runestones, and spent the last 200 years of his life searching for a fourth. Convinced that the proper classification called for such entities to appear in dual pairs, he never found this quartonic runestone, which he dubbed celerity, but he insisted until the end of his theory, until the end of his life, that the theory was sound. Was Camolin Wee right? Do celery runestones exist? But in some state of reality that makes them imperceptible to m mortals. Um, that is a question that is so far unanswerable that we do not know. But we can get two theories from this, that the runestones in the game, um, the Lyre and Jedi, were actually celerity runestones, and his theory is right, so Camelon and we would be pleased. Or we can also argue the fact that the positive and negative potency runes are clearly distinct, which would also form a dual pair, which would give the four classes of runestones without needing celerity, meaning that he also would have been right. Um, so yeah, guys, these are the two theories that we can gather from this for the lore aspect of the video. Um, now, obviously, the lore aspect is most likely wrong. However, this is what we can gather from this. These are actually celerity runestones, um, or that they are not celerity runestones, and that these are just bugged runestones that should not have been in the game. Or perhaps there is a fifth runestone, meaning that there are triple pairs, but we do not know. Um, so yeah, guys, with that being said, um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I'm going to try to come out with some more videos. I actually recently found out that there actually might be a thing called um, Sujama Berries, which are actually um, a provisioning ingredient that got taken out of the game, which is like absolutely insane to think about as well. Um, so there might have actually been recipes that called for Sujama Berries, and I'm not too sure. I'm to do some more research on that. But uh, yeah, guys, thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe um, for more content. Um, and as always, YouTube, this is Booty Boy Zombie Prodigy, and peace.